Good morning, everyone. I see you all did a run this morning because you actually answered my good morning. Thanks. Thanks for showing up in so large numbers. And uh, to talk a little bit about Windows 10 Mobile. My name is uh, Alan Mears. I'm an architect in Microsoft Services working with the Windows BG on Windows 10 Mobile. And I'm, uh, I'm accompanied here today with uh, Jason Whitehorn sitting in the front here. will jo join me on the stage uh, uh, later uh, during the presentation. He's actually a partner software engineer manager in the Windows operating system group, or the Windows and devices group, as we call them these days, right? So let's talk about Windows 10 Mobile, Windows 10 for mobile devices. Uh, this is not the session you intended to follow. Now it's the time to go and go to your old session, but I think most of you are here for, uh, uh, for this story. Um, let's uh, talk about Windows 10 Mobile, and obviously I'm probably not the first one talking to you about digital transformation. Mobile is a big part of digital transformation, right? Companies like uh, Uber, Etc. I wouldn't be here if there wouldn't be mobile devices around where people could actually order a, uh, a real ride to some place uh, as such. So uh, it's a real thing to happen as mobile is a really big part of that. Windows 10 is our family, if you want, is the one operating system and Windows 10 Mobile is a part of that. And Windows 10 our investments for business customers like yourselves and like your customers are is uh, really focused at making sure we have a device that is more personal or a operating system that allows to build devices that are more personal, that are trusted, secure. Security is a really big point these days for uh, most companies and that deliver the productivity that the users being it a uh, information type user and, uh, or a being it a, a task based worker need to be productive for their company and drive the business for the company. Obviously, we are developing Windows 10 Mobile for an ecosystem of device vendors that will bring and are bringing uh, devices to the market today that run the mobile operating system based on the ARM architecture uh, across the board. Now, are we really committed to Windows 10 Mobile? We all know that there are lots of rumors in the market that Microsoft is going away from Windows 10 Mobile. And the answer is very clearly, yes, we are committed to the Windows 10 Mobile operating system, to building this operating system for device manufacturers so they can build these great innovative devices for all kinds of productivity and uh, um, uh, business uh, uh, uses. For those who can't find the seat, there is more seats over here on the left side. And so commitment to Windows 10 Mobile is for us a really important uh, point to stress uh, these days in the context of the rumors in the market as such. Obviously, we have been refocusing our efforts around Windows 10 Mobile and around our own portfolio of devices, and we continue to do that, but we're investing heavily in Windows 10 desktop uh, OS as well as mobile OS and OSs for other uh, devices uh, as such in the mobility scenarios uh, that, uh, that there are uh, to be uh, accomplished. And we'll talk more about that during this presentation. Obviously, we'll uh, continue to invest in our uh, own hardware, although we have nothing to announce or uh, uh, anything specific to talk about at this point in time. We have a lot of enter uh, enterprise-focused partners out there that are delivering Windows 10 mobile-based devices in mo multiple market segments, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that too. So if you look at the, uh, uh, the number of OEMs or mobile device manufacturers out there in the market today, there are a lot of them that are building Windows 10 mobile devices today that are available in market. Now, all these devices are obviously not available in all markets globally. Some are uh, limited to certain regions. Others, like the Hewlett Packard uh, X3, is available uh, across the world in all markets as such. So, these manufacturers have their own strategy in terms of distribution, uh, et cetera. 
It's a rich ecosystem of device manufacturers and they will continue to develop new devices based on our operating system. It's not just about phones though. Many of you may already be using Windows 10 mobile or Windows 10 mobile devices as handheld or ruggedized devices for more uh, line of business type of application, task worker type of applications from uh, some of our uh, mobile device manufacturers out there that are specifically focusing at this more industrialized or industry type of uh, solutions uh, across the board uh, uh, that are important to you to drive your digital transformation and your business uh, 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 as such. And then I would like to do a special shout out uh, to Hewlett Packard Inc. Uh, because the uh, Hewlett Packard co uh, company has brought a, a really great uh, mobile device or phone to market. Um, um, it has X3 in the name, uh, the Elite X3, because it's a three in one device. It's a great phone. It's actually nearly a great tablet. If Six inches isn't uh, uh, too small for you in terms of a tablet. And it functions like a PC with the peripherals available for this device. It has a uh, desk station or a desk dock that you want that plugs in and has USB ports, Ethernet, um, uh, what have you, to enable you to connect uh, um, mouse, keyboard, display, and other peripherals. And it has an on-the-go lab dock that is, uh, uh, looks like a laptop and works perfectly fine together with the phone to show you uh, the device or show you the, the Windows desktop through the continuum uh, technology built in the operating system uh, as such. You can look at this device and handle the device if you want uh, at the Hewlett Packard stand in the expo uh, down, I'm not sure in which hall, I think it's in C. Uh, but uh, there are a number of these uh, available there and people uh, are available there to show you the device if you want. It's a really great business uh, phone. Now, in this ecosystem of devices that we have out there uh, from these manufacturers, the first thing that is unique or differentiating for Windows 10 mobile operating system and these devices is that they deliver a more personal experience. Personal experience for business users, meaning Office 365 or the Office applications, Outlook, calendaring, all those things are built in and are, are coming with the device. They get updated separately from the OS but they have all these tools available uh, in the device itself without you having to install them. You can manage the applications, you don't have to install them. You have a great mobile uh, browser with Edge. Uh, you have great functionality in terms of functioning or using the device uh, um, as a PC with Continuum uh, as such, uh, delivering a desktop experience with mouse, keyboard, uh, and, and uh, the screen and you have all that you need to put Cortana to work uh, on the device to help you uh, search, find, and schedule all kinds of tasks and information that you want. Obviously, running universal Windows platform apps available for desktop, laptops, PCs, HoloLens, Hub, etc. So a number of uh, these applications are available from third parties as well as from uh, ourselves uh, on, in the store or the Windows store uh, for applications. The business applications are all built in and you have the same experience on your device uh, on, uh, using uh, uh, Continuum, using the device as a handheld device as you have on your desktop. You can uh, edit, uh, review, uh, annotate, etc., uh, Word, Excel, uh, a PowerPoint, uh, OneNote documents. Uh, you can view documents using the browser, including PDF documents, because Edge supports PDF viewing and reading uh, as such. You have all the tools built into the operating system, and they're always the newest because they get updated by the Windows Store uh, as such. You have um, 
the uh, Outlook and calendaring functionality that you're accustomed to and that your users are accustomed to from their desktop use, uh, as well from a typical Windows Office uh, uh, environment that uh, you may have on your desktops across the company uh, itself and connects easily to your Office 365 or your on-premises Exchange, SharePoint, uh, etc., to deliver documents and email uh, to them uh, uh, so they are more productive and can work and collaborate together. Continuum is obviously very unique to Windows uh, 10 mobile devices. Continuum really delivers a desktop experience. It's obviously not the desktop that we're used to on a PC. It is a desktop that runs universal applications across the board and, uh, and requires universal applications to view them and use them on a larger screen uh, as such. Most of the Microsoft built-in applications are uh, applications that fully support a continuum environment so that can be used uh, on a larger screen, on the go, or even uh, in the office. With the anniversary release of uh, Windows 10 uh, desktop, we now also have the PC Connect application in the operating system that enables every user to connect his one, uh, Windows 10 mobile phone directly to his desktop wirelessly so they can view what is on their phone and use the desktop on their phone. They can use this on the go to do presentations uh, from their phone. They can even connect, if they uh, 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 configure it correctly, uh, the, the phone over the lock screen or use a phone uh, to connect over the lock screen of somebody else. So they can show and display information they have on the phone without actually sharing any of the data or the documents uh, they have. So new for the uh, anniversary update is that you can really uh, partner your Windows 10 mobile phone or device with your Windows 10 laptop or desktop uh, to collaborate and to uh, present to customers and partners uh, and what have you. The HP Elite X3, and I'm really plugging this device because I love it, um, is a great device to do exactly this. Not just because it has all these uh, great peripherals to enable users to do that. It also has the functionality built in, including remote desktop applications and services delivered by HP for customers uh, as such. They have a great uh, partnership with us, and uh, we're glad to see HP bringing this phone globally to market uh, for uh, enterprise customers. Security is a really important element of uh, uh, IT. Cybersecurity for everyone uh, is probably a very high priority when you look at your IT infrastructure and your applications. Uh, with uh, Windows 10, we have invested a lot in security and we continue to be investing uh, in security with uh, Windows Hello and uh, the companion device framework, which I'll talk about in a minute. It obviously has a device guard to protect the device from malware and making sure only trusted applications are actually available and running on these devices so you know what you have within your company. And new with the anniversary release is the introduction of Windows information protection. And for somebody who have been following this space, we usually used to call this in the pre-release time frame uh, EDP or Enterprise Data Protection. But Windows Information Protection helps you protect your corporate data and documents from leaking uh, as such and, and delivers transparent containerization uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, information on the device uh, for a bring your own uh, type of scenarios. Identity is a controlling element uh, on your mobile device. It delivers the control you need from an IT perspective to manage and to uh, allow users to use uh, information and services on the device. Windows 10 Mobile integrates perfectly with uh, Azure AD, the AD in the cloud if you want, that synchronizes with your on-premises AD uh, to enable authentication uh, of users on mobile devices as well as through mobile devices 
uh, for uh, all types of applications like web browsing sessions or line of business applications, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, this enables you to actually take control of the device and only have a corporate or a work account on the device. You no longer need a Microsoft account or a live ID, as we uh, used to call it, on a device to have the device function and the user access the store or other services in the cloud. You can now control the device completely with uh, Azure AD. Windows Hello is a framework that enables not just the authentication, it also enables integration of biometrics uh, within this authentication, so you can make it simpler for users to log into their devices and still keep this login secure. I would actually say not just still, even more secure uh, than before. Users no longer have to use passwords. They can now use their fingerprint or an eye scan to get into the device, authenticate against services, authenticate against the VPN, etc because it's fully integrated in the Windows authentication framework, which we call uh, Windows Hello. It enables you to deliver low-cost, multi-factor authentication uh, that would otherwise require additional third-party tools and add-ons uh, to enable within your corporation. Security is built into the operating system. A lot is inherited here from the desktop. Uh, Device Guard is by default uh, on Windows 10 Mobile. You cannot run any devices that are not properly signed and trusted or any applications that are not properly signed and trusted on, on a Windows 10 Mobile device. They come from the store or they come from your private store through your MDM uh, system that you're using for these mobile devices. And I would also say that it's important to see that uh, we also have received the uh, accreditations of governments uh, through FIP certification for encryption, uh, common criteria, and, uh, and we also have a stick for, or a uh, security guide for the um, uh, US DOD department to deploy Windows 10 mobile devices within their environment. So if you're really looking at those certifications and guidance, uh, you can find them uh, 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 today with the US government. Information protection, as I said before, is one of the key new elements on uh, Windows 10 Mobile and Windows 10 anniversary uh, update uh, released on, uh, in, in the beginning of August of uh, this year. It really enables you to protect corporate information, documents, etc., by using encryption to encrypt these documents They are coming from your enterprise environment, being SharePoint, uh, Exchange, uh, websites that you have, shares within your organization, protects this information with uh, encryption, and this allows the user to share this information accidentally or intentionally uh, through uh, 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 sharing it with other outside of the company uh, uh, people or, or uh, organizations. It really delivers a transparent way of containerizing what is yours versus what is theirs. Uh, they don't have to switch between multiple environments. They can just work. You control what uh, d uh, information is yours, and they can work with it, and you can prevent them or allow them to share that information, depending on what you want to do uh, specifically. It works the same uh, on desktop and on mobile devices, and uh, it is easily to manage uh, with the mobile device management system, being it the Microsoft one, or one from the third parties. So Windows Information Protection has multiple modes, a block mode, which really prevents the user from sharing information with outside uh, resources, or an override mode that is audit audited or that, is, uh, that creates log files of what the user is doing. Uh, the override mode enables a user to say, I will copy something and make it a personal file and then share it with it, uh, with you tracking it through your MDM system, what exactly is going on. So when a user has all these trusted applications uh, from an office environment on his device, 
and receives an email with an attachment. They can open the attachment because the trusted Excel will know about the encryption and will be able to decrypt that, uh, that data. If the user tries to copy data from the Excel file into a uh, personal application, any personal application that you have not designated as being a trusted one, uh, the copy will be prevented or will be logged uh, as such. Uh, if they will copy something from Excel to Word, they can just do what they are always have done, be productive, collaborate with, uh, with colleagues, etc. Uh, in, uh, in a trusted environment. But the moment they want to save documents to an outside store, the documents will be uh, encrypted uh, uh, and will not be decryptable by anybody uh, but these specific users who saved the document uh, there. Obviously, when they save a document to your corporate environment, the document will uh, be decrypted and saved unencrypted so other users can actually use it. So, for example, on a OneDrive for Business, they can save it there, they can save it on a SharePoint, it will not be encrypted so other employees can actually access it. So very transparent containerization of information with the IT department in control over how it works, what policies are set on those, uh, etc. VPN is also our uh, kind of forward-looking remote access solution within Windows desktops and within Windows mobile. And we have uh, um, greatly extended our reach with VPN. Uh, we have now across the board application specific uh, VPN. So a VPN will be fired up whenever an application needs access to a certain information store or uh, um, uh, et cetera, resource uh, within your network. Uh, if you want, uh, you can have an always on VPN that sends all the traffic to your network so you can filter it and inspect it uh, any way you want. Uh, the VPN infrastructure is not just supported by Microsoft VPN backends, but also by a lot of third parties. Think about uh, Cisco and F5 and uh, Juniper, etc. Uh, from a VPN perspective. Same for PC and desktop. A lot of this stuff is the same for the PC and the desktop. So if you deploy policies and configuration profiles, you can actually use them for desktops as well as for PCs. So desktops could be tablets, etc., that are being used mobile. Uh, could even be bring your own uh, PC uh, that are running Windows 10. From a more productive perspective, we're trying to make you more productive. As IT professionals in your organization, you have all things to worry about, and we want to make it as simple as possible. The first thing was what I just talked about. Make sure you can do the same thing on a phone as you can do on a PC. Very similar things, and have a one integrated mobile device management infrastructure for your devices within the company. We are delivering Azure Active Directory for identity management with automatic uh, MDM enrollment through Azure Active Directory. So you have always control over these mobile devices. We enable you to do dynamic provisioning with provisioning packages uh, that are easily to create with Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer. And obviously, the, the data protection infrastructure is all MDM based. Another feature that we're really excited about is Proximity Connect. Right now, you can use Continuum both in a wired dock scenario and also wirelessly. But in future releases, you'll be able to use it with Proximity Connect, which means that you have the device in your pocket or in your bag. You walk up to a wireless docking station. It recognizes that you're there, and you can immediately go to work. We're also adding increased customization so that you can customize the start screen both on the phone and on the large screen. Um, so that you can tailor each one to the way that you like to use the device. And finally, we're adding a whole slew of uh, features in order to make that full screen experience more like using a PC. As Alan said, Continuum is all about universal Windows applications. And those are the applications which run on the device. But in future releases of Continuum, we're going to make that experience much more like a PC. You'll be able to hit the Windows button and type in the command that you want to run. You'll be able to pin apps to the taskbar and system tray. 
And most importantly, you'll be able to run multiple windows on the screen side by side, just as you would in a PC. Thank you. Appreciate the slow clap. So I have a couple of screens that I want to show you. Um, these are actually mock-ups, but then I'll get to a video which shows you some real working code. What you see on this one are a couple of updates um, to the way that the system runs in the shell. So you see that action center, a PC-like action center on the right side of the screen. You also see a system tray in the lower right-hand side, and you see some applications pinned to the taskbar on the bottom. In this next screen, you also see PC-like interactions with the applications. So here we'll be adding the ability to have context menus when you use the mouse, as well as PC-like notifications, which you see in the bottom right-hand corner. Now let me go ahead and start this video. What you're going to see in this video is uh, multiple overlapping windows and some of the new shell interactions that we're just now adding. We'll go ahead and connect the device. It takes a few seconds for it to light up on the large screen. Now here you see he's going to go ahead and start an application from the start menu. The application starts up in its own window, unlike current Continuum, which you can resize like you would on a PC. You can move the window around, and then you can go ahead and start a second application. As you can see, these windows are independently movable and can be closed just like they can on a PC. And if you drag the window all the way to the left, it'll snap in place, also like a PC. So we're really excited about our Continuum feature. This is something that we think is super important for mobile workers who are using that device in their pocket all day long, but who when they get to their workstation want to be able to work productively, use that keyboard, a large screen, and a mouse. And we think this is a great way to help make information workers more productive. And that's it. So we hope that you've enjoyed our talk today on Windows uh, Mobile. Um, please be sure to evaluate this session. Let Alan and I know what you like and also like what you'd like to see us do differently next time. And with that, we'll go to Q&A. Thank you. You have a question? Yes, that's correct. If your hardware supports it and it provides touchscreen support, you'll be able to use that on the large screen. Uh, no inking support on the large screen to announce at this time. You have a question? Yeah, I'll go ahead and repeat the question. So the question was, today when you use Continuum, not all of the applications, and in fact not all of the experiences in the phone run on Continuum on the large screen. That's correct, and we are on a long-term process of enabling more and more applications and experiences to run on the large screen. Other questions? Go ahead. Uh, the question was, what's the time frame on these updates? So uh, I promised all the teams that I talked to about this session today that I wouldn't uh, specifically say when we would be shipping them. Um, but these are all things that we are actively working on and you can expect before too long. Did we commit to a certain cadence in uh, how many feature updates we would do on a calendar year basis? Um, you mean as, a, as an operating system group? Right. We do two uh, updates per year. Um, that's what we plan for. Um, but which of these features land in which updates, uh, I really can't commit to right now. Yes? So going back to the previous question about enabling older applications to work in the continuum space, with the new windowed environment, would that still, were you guys looking at investigating maybe still keeping those that aren't continuum enabled but in their smaller windows and fixed size so that they can still be used without being updated? That's a great question. I don't have anything more to show you than what I showed you today. Okay. Um, but we're definitely always looking for ways to maximize that large screen experience on Continuum. Okay. What about the insider program? Uh, the question is, what about the insider program? Okay. 
Okay. So the question is, what about the Insider program on mobile? Uh, we sort of always seem to be behind the times a little bit relative to the PC. Um, so I would say that the Insider program is essential to what we're doing across all of the Windows and Devices group. Um, this is not just a small change for our group. It's essentially a new way of life, a new way of engineering for the team. Um, whereas before we would go on a large cycle and get feedback over a course of a year or two, uh, it's now important for all teams in the group to be able to get that regular feedback. So the answer is we will continue to have an insider program for phone. Um, it'll be a little bit different from PC as it is today, but we're certainly always seeking to make that as quick as possible. This I will say, if you are an active user of the insider program, you will start to see some of these features light up before too long. Yes? Oh, great question. Uh, this is my Windows phone. The question is, how is Microsoft using the Windows phone internally? Um, the answer to that uh, is that, you know, obviously internally we use, you know, many of our employees have Windows phone. A lot of our internal applications run on Windows phone. Um, but you also know that Microsoft produces applications for multiple mobile operating systems, and that's an important part of our strategy. So while you know, I use a Windows phone every day and many of the people around me do, it's also important that we have some other operating system in-house as well because we know that that's the way that our customers work also. Yes? Okay, and your question is, how do we fix that? Yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll try to summarize the, the question. It was basically, hey, Continuum looks like a good feature, but a lot of the applications that we run on PCs are applications that are Win32, x86 applications, which don't run on a phone. So how can I get that to work in Continuum? Well, the first thing that I'll say is that uh, certainly that is true. Today, the applications that we run in Continuum and in general on the mobile device are those universal Windows platform applications. Uh, and we don't support Win32 uh, applications on that device today. Um, I would encourage you, I, I acknowledge that, that gap, I would encourage you to move your line of business applications to the new universal Windows platform. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, um, I will uh, say that, you know, you heard from Alan about Hewlett Packard's solution. And Hewlett Packard has done a lot of work in this space. Um, and something which is a great solution in those cases is to actually RDP out to a back end server system running those line of business applications. I agree it's not as smooth as a fully integrated native solution, but if you have occasional use of those line of business applications, that's really the way to go. Other questions? Yeah. Okay, so the question, great question. When is Microsoft going to make another phone? So Alan put up a quote on the screen from Terry Myerson, my boss, uh, where he stated that we were still very much committed to mobile and that our partners will continue to make devices and we will continue to make devices. Um, I don't have anything more to announce, um, but what Terry said is still true. Yes. So the question was ARM64 support. Today uh, in Windows Mobile, all of the devices that we run on, we run in 32-bit mode, even when it is a 64-bit processor. Uh, right now, that's not really a limitation for us since the devices are all four gigabits or four gigabytes or less, um, but that will change uh, over the next couple years. So the question is when will we support it or, or do we support it? We don't support it today and I don't have an announcement to make, but I acknowledge that's an important gap. that we're very aware of. Another question on this side. Yes. Yeah. So one of the problems um, that we have as Windows Phone users is that when Microsoft released applications for other uh, operating systems, like Android and iOS, it makes it much more difficult for the Windows Phone users to actually justify to other people why Windows Phone is so great. So why does Microsoft Available on iOS and Android, but not on Windows Phone. And it makes it 
Right. So the question is, um, you know, why is it that Microsoft releases applications, Microsoft first party applications on competitive operating systems uh, in addition to Windows Phone or in some cases even before Windows Phone? Um, so the answer to that is really, I would sort of reference what I said before, which is that we recognize that in the IT industry and the sort of computing public today, um, there are a lot of organizations which run a mix of PCs on the desktop and a variety of mobile operating systems. And it's important for Microsoft to support all of those operating systems. Even so, it's essential that we also support Windows Mobile. And so what you'll continue to see is us supporting multiple operating systems, but more and more making sure that the applications that we release run first and best on Windows Mobile. Yes? Great question, so I'll repeat that. I, I think the, the question was, hey, these features look great, um, but when can I get a new Verizon phone? Is that more or less uh, paraphrasing the question? Um, so uh, as Alan said, we don't have any hardware announcements to make uh, other than what we've talked about already, um, but we do recognize that it's a gap, uh, and uh, stay tuned. Yes? Sure. So, so I'll try to kind of rephrase that uh, as a question. The, the concern was similar to one raised before, which is, hey, you know, it's fine that you have applications on other platforms, but you know, there are cases where applications are released on other platforms before they're released on Windows Phone, and that makes it a little bit difficult if I've been in a position of arguing for Windows Phone. I think that was more or less the point. Um, yes, that's correct. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, we do want the apps across all of the platforms, but we would love for the applications to always show up first and best on Windows. Um, that hasn't been the case always, although it is often the case, and we are working to address those cases where it hasn't been the case. Yes? Got it. So the question was about visual voicemail. Uh, today on Windows Mobile, we do offer visual voicemail aligned with certain operators uh, and functionality which those operators uh, provide. But the question was, would we offer a generic sort of operator independent visual voicemail? Uh, and I have, I have nothing to announce about that at this time. Yes? Yeah, so, so the question was, uh, the anniversary update was disruptive to his uh, MDM, his provider. As Alan mentioned, we do work with a number of providers. Uh, and the question really is, how good is that working relationship? Um, I would say that we do have a pretty open relationship with those providers, uh, and we do provide uh, early access, frankly, to, to any insider that provides a lot of the functionality, but of course, 
not all of that, since some of it comes late in the group in the uh, in the engineering process. I would take that as feedback that we should do a better job, and I definitely take that feedback. Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, the, the way to do this is to upgrade your device to the enterprise edition, uh, which you can do with an MDM or a provisioning package, and then apply uh, deferral policies on the device. You can uh, defer a, um, once we release the anniversary update, uh, early August, I say, right? You can defer the uh, update until we declare it uh, CBB. Am I uh, speaking Chinese if I say CBB? <laughs> <laughs> because we have these acronyms. So the, the current branch for business, when we declare that, then uh, your deferral uh, will end, which is usually around four months, uh, approximately. And for a monthly update, a quality update, you can postpone them for 28 or four weeks on uh, 1511. And as of anniversary update, that becomes 35 days um, uh, as such. So you have some time to, after we actually have released it, Postpone the updates until you can test and then roll it out with your MDM. Go ahead. Uh, so the question was, uh, you know, given what Terry said, what would success look like uh, in a year for Windows 10 Mobile? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I don't want to set targets independently from, uh, from what Terry has said. So I will only say this. Um, you know, our desire in this space is that Windows Mobile remain uh, the safest, uh, most manageable, most deployable solution for organizations that are already Microsoft customers. Um, and that is certainly our aim. Um, we've said a lot more than that, and I won't replace that. Um, but uh, I would say that we definitely intend to do that. And you'll see that in the next year and in the years after that. Does that mean we're over time? We are over time. All right, we have time for one more question. OK. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to generalize that question. The specific question was, will we ever get a Snapchat app? Um, the first thing I would say is, please, ask Snapchat. When will we ever get a Windows mobile application? Um, it is definitely the case that uh, there are applications um, which are not available on our platform today. We wish that they were. Uh, we have a significant effort working with IASVs to encourage them to, to write for our platform, to help them write for our platform, um, but that is an ongoing process. We'll have that be the last question. Thank you for coming, and we look forward to your feedback. Thank you.